My aunt tripped on her MacBook Air cord, causing it to fall, and the screen went black. When I opened it, the screen is black because it's been cracked. I want to help her out, but I've never replaced a MacBook Air screen, so today let's see if I can fix it. The first thing I'm going to do is get the model number to make sure I get the right screen. In this case, it's an A1466. I ordered a screen, then let the computer sit on my table for four days until the screen arrived. Once the screen came in, I grabbed my Bonafide Hardware Toolkit and pulled out the T5, T8, and P5 bits. Apple uses tons of different screws in their other devices, so it may not be too bad with only three bits. I also grabbed a plastic pry spudger, some tweezers, and one of these magnetic repair mats. These are great because this magnetic strip holds down all the metal screws. I'll have everything I use linked below. To get started, I'm going to first remove the two inner screws next to the hinge. These are different than the other screws because they're about three times as long. These other screws are a lot smaller, so I'm going to keep them organized by using that magnetic mat. With the screws out, I'm going to use the plastic spudger to take off the back plate. After taking a look at this for a few minutes, I've found that there's some cables running along the hinge that I'll probably have to remove. I'm also going to take out this side circuit and remove this fan that's underneath this cable. But before I do anything, I'm going to disconnect the battery by pulling on this tabbed cable. This stops any power from going to the circuit board. Next, I'm going to flip this bracket so I can remove the display cable. Now I'll remove this large ribbon cable which disconnects the side circuit from the main circuit board. Underneath that ribbon cable were two more cables that I'll need to remove. This first one was a little hard to slide out, but the second one was a lot easier. For the audio cable, make sure you slide the pry bar underneath and lift upwards, otherwise if you pull to the side, it will break the connection. Next, I'll grab the T5 bit and remove the screws holding down the side motherboard. Next, I'm going to remove this tiny ribbon cable that's connected to the fan, but I first need to pop up this latch that's holding down the cable. With that disconnected, lift up the rubber gasket and remove the two screws holding down the fan. There's one more screw on the bottom that you'll also have to remove. When you lift up on the fan, make sure to push in on the ribbon cable so it doesn't tear. As a side note, this fan was pretty clean, but if yours is really dirty, now's a good time to clean it, but just make sure you don't damage the metal connection. Next, I need to disconnect the ribbon cable underneath this plastic tab. Lift up on the latch, and it will come right out. With that last ribbon cable disconnected, I'm now free to pull out the side circuit board. You can see here, this circuit board holds the MagSafe power connection, the USB, and headphone jack. Now I'm going to move over and disconnect the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna. To disconnect, slide the end of your spudger underneath the metal head, then twist it to disconnect. Now I'm going to thread the antenna through the back hinge to pull it out. As a side note, I kept finding little brown pieces of dirt scattered throughout the computer. At this point when I was taking out the antenna, I got a closer look and realized it wasn't dirt, but it was actually dead mosquitoes. I'm no expert, but I will say if the mosquitoes are so bad they're living in your computer, it may be time to call pest control or your real estate agent. For this next part, I'm going to work on the hinges and I'm going to grab the T8 bit. These hinge screws can be a little tough to take out, so sometimes you have to use quite a bit of pressure. From other repairs that I've done on Macs, i found the easiest way to remove a screen is to leave a screw in the center of the hinges. Leaving that one screw in the hinge allows me to open up the MacBook 90 degrees, and it's much easier to take out. After I open it 90 degrees, I'm going to remove the two screws, which will allow me to take off the screen. The broken screen's completely removed, so now it's time to put on the new one. From trial and error, I've learned that it's a good idea to put on gloves when you're dealing with a new screen. After I get out the new screen, I'm going to turn the hinges so they face forward 90 degrees. With those facing forward, I'm going to align the hinges to the computer, then only use one screw to tighten it down. You may have to open and close it a few times to get the screen to align to the computer frame, but once it's aligned, I'm going to remove the two screws on the hinge. 
When I take out the screws, I use these boxes in this mat to organize each step. If you don't have a mat, you can just draw boxes on a piece of paper. I also try to organize the parts where they're found on the repair, so in this case the fan is the top right corner. Trust me when I say that taking a second to organize makes everything so much easier. Now I need to put everything back together, so I'm going to put in the circuit board, then plug in all the cables. These ribbon cables can be kind of hard to install, so push on the back of the connector to slide it in, then push down on the latch to lock it in place. For the audio piece, make sure to push it straight down and not slide it in. For this cable, I thread it in place, then lightly tighten the screw, which held it down. The motherboard helps hold it in place, and once I connect the end, I tighten the screw. Next up, I'm going to connect the ribbon cable to install the fan. To install it, I'm going to push on the back of this plastic head, and then lock the latch. After the fan's installed, I'm going to tighten down the three screws. Before I hook up the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I'm going to align this metal plate, then tighten down the screws for the hinge. One of these wires is longer than the other, so it makes it easy to line them up. The display cable is pretty easy to install, just plug it in and push down the latch. With the display cable installed, I'm going to tighten the hinges, then install this wide cable that bridges the two circuit boards. Make sure to install this cable so that the curve aligns to the frame, because I learned if it's flipped it won't power on. Finally, I'm going to plug in the power, then put on the cover and test that everything's working. Before I tested everything, I decided to give it a good cleaning. With the case off, this thing really needed a bath. When I tried to power it on, nothing happened, but found that if I plugged it in and did an NVRAM reset, it powered right up. And I will say, the new screen looks fantastic. I'll have the same screen and the tools linked below. I hope this video gave you the confidence to try this repair yourself and save some money, and will also allow you to go out and help someone else. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.